Imagine there's a locked storage room deep inside your belly, right behind your abs. It's packed with visceral fat, pressed up against your liver and organs. Insulin is one of the biggest locks on that door. Not the only one, but a big one. Every snack, every sweet sip, every just a bite is like sending delivery trucks to that warehouse. And every delivery clicks another lock tight. Now picture this, for 30 straight days, you stop deliveries for 23 hours a day, one meal, one window, that's it. So what happens? Does the door finally loosen and inventory starts moving out? Or does your body panic, hit the alarm, and bolt it shut? You're not just curious, you're worried you'll do it wrong. Low energy, headaches, losing muscle, then overeating at dinner, and refilling the warehouse in one night. And the biggest fear, what if OMAD spikes stress hormones and makes visceral fat cling harder? Here's the nuance. Stress hormones don't add calories out of thin air, but they can crank up appetite, they can mess with sleep, they can make cravings louder, and they can push you toward chaotic eating. So if OMAD makes you wired, edgy, and sleep-deprived, your one meal can turn into a rebound feast. That's how the warehouse gets restocked by chaos, not by magic. So let's run it like a real timeline, what you'll feel, what's happening, what's normal, what's a red flag, and how to make those locks relax safely. Days one to three are the switch phase. Truth, you're changing the schedule. You're not melting visceral fat yet. Hunger comes in waves, usually at your old meal times. That's not your body breaking, that's conditioning. If you lived on constant carbs and snacking, you may feel cranky, foggy, maybe a mild headache. And yes, the scale might drop fast, but that early drop is mostly glycogen and water. Stored carbs hold water. When you burn through those stores, water comes with it. The real win in days one to three is fewer insulin spikes across the day. With insulin not constantly elevated, your body can access stored energy between meals more easily. Normal versus red flag. Normal. Hunger waves. Mild irritability. A headache that improves with water, salt, and sleep. Red flags. Fainting. Chest pain. Severe weakness. Or binging so hard you feel out of control. If you're on diabetes meds or blood pressure meds, don't freestyle this. Talk to a clinician first. By the end of day three, the lock isn't gone, but it's not welded shut either. Days four to seven is appetite rewiring. Cravings stop being random and start showing up on schedule. Hunger starts acting like a calendar, not an emergency siren. Many people feel steadier energy because they're not riding the snack roller coaster all afternoon. But this week decides whether OMAD helps or backfires. The trap is the carb bomb meal, refined carbs with low protein and low fiber. You feel great fast, then hunger rebounds hard. That's not weakness, that's physiology. If you want this to work, build the meal like it matters. Protein first, then plants and fiber, then carbs and fats in a way that actually keeps you full. Mini rule. Finish with something you can repeat tomorrow, not something you need to recover from. This is the week you either keep the door relaxed or you relock it overnight. Days 8 to 14 is the waste clue. Your belt tells the truth before the scale does. So stop asking, why isn't the scale moving? Start asking, is my waist changing? Track three signals. Waste at the navel, same time, same posture. The post-meal crash. A 10-minute walk after your meal. That walk matters. It smooths the spike, quiets cravings, and improves how your body handles that meal. Reality check. Changing the eating window alone isn't a guaranteed visceral fat melt button. In randomized trials, time-restricted eating often performs similarly to daily calorie restriction when calories and protein are comparable. If your belt hasn't changed by day 14, it's usually one mistake. The window creeps and one meal becomes ours. Liquid calories sneak in, protein fiber are too low, so you graze later. Week 2 gives you a scoreboard, and it tells you if inventory is moving. Days 15 to 21 is myth-busting week. Starvation mode. Metabolism damage. You'll lose muscle. 
Metabolism isn't controlled by meal frequency. It's driven mostly by body size, lean mass, hormones, activity, and total intake over time. Adaptive thermogenesis is real when calories are very low for a long time, but it's not a punishment for eating at 6 p.m. instead of noon. Across many trials, intermittent fasting approaches tend to be about as effective as daily calorie restriction when overall intake and consistency are similar. So why do some people lose visceral fat fast on OMAD while others gain belly back? Not willpower. It's what's inside the meal and what the plan does to hunger, sleep, and stress. If muscle loss is your fear, do three things. One, protein anchor, 30 to 40 grams as a baseline, more if bigger, older. Two, strength train twice a week. Three, protect sleep like it's part of the plan. Bad sleep is the alarm that makes your body guard the inventory. Days 22 to 30, two endings, same OMAD label, totally different movie. Ending A, hunger gets quieter, energy steadier, waist inches down, cravings feel less random. Ending B, false progress, the scale is down, but the waist is stubborn, that early drop was water. Now you're white-knuckling the fast, stretching the window, or rewarding yourself into a refined carb dinner. You didn't fail OMAD. You built a version that doesn't fit you. One more important note. For some people, OMAD, especially as a late heavy meal, can worsen LDL cholesterol. So don't assume OMAD is automatically heart healthy. If lipids matter, check labs and build the meal smarter. Remember, OMAD doesn't melt visceral fat. OMAD changes the signals. Your meal decides the outcome. After 30 days, you'll know the door loosened, or it stayed shut. Here's your 30-second OMAD check. If you want visceral fat to move, keep these five rules. One, keep the feeding window honest, 60 minutes, not three hours. Two, protein anchor first. Three, fiber and whole foods daily. Four, no liquid calories sneaking in. Five, track waste weekly. Don't obsess over the scale daily and add the simplest fat loss amplifier after dinner, a 10-minute walk, small action, huge payoff. Before you go, make this safe and real. Tonight, do just two things. Measure your waist at the navel and take a 10-minute walk after your one meal. That's your baseline. That's your first win. Now, if you're starting OMAD for 30 days, comment 30 and type your one meal time, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., whatever you can repeat on your hardest day, and add one word, calm or chaos, because calm OMAD unlocks the warehouse, chaos restocks it. If you want a simple one meal template that protects muscle and keeps cravings quiet, hit subscribe. Next video, I'll show you the exact protein first plate and the three mistakes that keep visceral fat locked in. Your belly isn't broken, your signals are just loud, lower the noise, and the inventory starts moving out.